body. I say as God is adding value to this ministry, God is adding value to your life. You don't want to be on the line. You want to plunge into this glory. You want to connect with this covenant. You really want to be part of what God is doing in this house because the Lord will not stop. I say God will not stop. Give God praise somebody. I want you to turn your Bible with me to now to the book of Matthew chapter 21. And I want to read verse number 10. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 10. The Bible says, And when Jesus had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, Who is this? The city began to shake because Jesus came in the city. And everybody began to wonder and they said, who is this person? Who is this man that's come in the city? When Jesus came to Jerusalem, everybody began to wonder at who just came to town. Because they started to see the power and the glory of the kingdom being revealed. And they all started to wonder, who is this individual? And the Bible says, and the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Verse 13, and said unto them, it is written, my father's house shall be called the house of prayer. But he have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Everybody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now, it's important for you, child of God, to understand the important things in your life. As God begins to take you from the peripheral level into the depth of his glory, your priorities begins to shift. As you begin to navigate your destiny and you begin to walk into a more place of intimacy, a deeper place of revelation, a deeper place of understanding, a deeper place of your destiny, your priorities will begin to shift. The Bible says when I was a child, I thought as a child, I spoke as a child, I acted as a child. But when I became a man, I put childish things behind. I began to mind the things that pertains to dominion. I want you to hear this. I began to mind the things that pertains to destiny. I began to mind the things that pertains to the will of God for my life. Babies, they mind temporary things. But those who have matured, they pay attention to permanent things. Things that have lasting value. Things that have eternal value. Babies, they mind things that are outside. Things that the eyes can see. But when you grow a little bit more, you begin to mind things that are inside. The things that the eyes cannot see. The Bible tells us that everything that is visible, everything that your eyes can see, it could have value, but its value is little. The word of God let us understand that the things that have the bigger value are the things that you cannot see. God help me tonight. Whenever you cannot see something, its value increases. The things you can't see, they are the things that produce the things that you can see. And when you are still a child, you are more concerned with the things that you can see. You can see wisdom, for example. Nobody can say this is wisdom. But the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. With all thy getting, get understanding. If you are just starting out and God told you to pick between a Ferrari and, a, and wisdom, God said to you, pick between having Ferrari, a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, and, or picking wisdom. If you are young, you're a teenager, you will pick Ferrari. 
because you would think Ferrari is physical. You can touch it. It has value, but you will not pick wisdom. Why? Because I can't see wisdom. What is wisdom anyway? How do I even know I have wisdom? But as you grow older, you begin to understand that there are things that I can't see that have greater value. If the Lord asks you to, to pick between a $2 million home and to pick the anointing, he said, my anointing, the gifting of God, the power of the Holy Ghost to come on your spirit. If you are still a child, you will pick the $2 million home because you will say to yourself, the $2 million home has value. I can put it in the real estate market. The anointing, what is the value of the anointing? How do I even know I have the anointing? I cannot see the anointing. Everybody can see the house. I can't see the anointing. But the people that have wisdom, the people who have come of age, they understand that if I get the anointing, $2 million home will be nothing. If I get wisdom, I can get anything. I can walk in any realm if I get wisdom. So oftentimes, the enemy understands the big things in our lives. The enemy understands it. Your, the witches, they understand it. The powers of darkness, they understand it. But the believers do not understand it. So we ignore the important things in our spirit. We just leave it away. Oh my God, I'm talking to somebody. We are not careful about the more powerful things of the spirit that we cannot see. We rather pay attention to what we can see. We pay at, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. When we see people, we pay attention to what they look like outside. We don't care about what is inside of them. You judge by your eyes. You judge by your feelings. You judge by your sight. You don't judge by the power of the Holy Ghost. You don't understand things by the depth of the spirit. Is there somebody here that's saying to God, give me the spirit of insight. Give me the spirit of revelation. So that when I begin to discern and I begin to navigate life, I can look beyond the natural and I can see into the depth of God. There is a depth inside of your spirit. There is an anointing that's on your life. There's a gift of God that's on your life. There's a hand of God that's on your life. There's a vision from God that's on your life. There's a destiny from God that's on your life. You might not see what your destiny is in the physical. You might not see the anointing in the physical. You might not see wisdom in the physical, but the anointing on your life is more valuable than car. It's more valuable than house. It's more valuable than a, a, a job. It's more valuable than a, a, a car in the driveway or what you have in your closet. And that's why the devil is fighting your anointing. The devil does not fight people's car. He's fighting them for their destiny. The devil does not fight you, my God, for your car, for your house, for your job. He doesn't fight you for things that you can see in the physical. The devil is fighting you. Every time the devil fought a man of God in the Bible, he's fighting them. Not because of what they have now, but because of who they're going to become some of you are here right now you don't look like much you don't have a million dollar in the bank but there's a gift inside of you there's an anointing on your inside and the devil knows that anointing and that's why the devil is fighting your anointing because the devil knows if I allow that gift inside of you to continue to grow if I allow that wisdom inside of you to continue to grow if I allow that power inside of you to continue to grow if I allow that glory inside of you to continue to grow you are going to be a world changer you are going to be a history maker and that's why the devil is fighting you you got to know the place of your battle this battle is not about a house this battle is not about a car this battle is about my destiny it's about my glory it's about my anointing that's why I don't give up easily because I know Satan is fighting me for what God is going to make me. Am I talking to somebody tonight? Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. When you go in the book of Revelation, the Bible was talking about the fall of Babylon. I want you to hear me, somebody. The Bible says Babylon has fallen. 
Babylon the Great has fallen. And scriptures began to highlight that before the fall of Babylon, I want you to hear me somebody. The Bible says in, in Babylon, they were busy making transactions. The Bible says for in you, O Babylon. And what is Babylon? Babylon represents the systems of the world. Babylon represents the Luciferian culture. Babylon represents the diabolical demonic structure of the end time. And the Bible says Babylon is falling and, and scripture started to highlight the things that they were doing in Babylon and the Bible says they were selling things in Babylon and scriptures began to highlight the things they sold and the Bible says they sold a raiment and silver and gold and fine linen and precious stones and donkeys and cattle and horses and camels and currencies of all sorts and the Bible ended it by saying they are also selling the souls of men they are selling the gift of men they are selling the destiny of men I'm talking to you ladies and gentlemen we are living in a Luciferian culture we are living in a diabolical culture we are living in a systemic satanic culture where there is merchandise and a transaction that's going on every day concerning the destiny of people my god the devil is a liar i came to tell you here tonight that there is a market there is a marketplace the marketplace is in the realm of the spirit you can see this marketplace but it exists is in the realm of the spirit and in this marketplace there is the sales that's going on the devil is putting for sale so many people's lives have been put on sale God help me tonight so many people's future have been put on sale so many people's destiny have been put on sale so many people's potential has been put on sale you begin to see a child that you would imagine would have a great life and everybody is expecting the life of this child to go such such certain way they're expecting greatness and suddenly something will happen and this child with great potential will begin to get hooked on the substance abuse or something will derail him and the man or the child with a great expectation will suddenly lose everything his life has been put on sale I came to talk to somebody tonight marriages have been put for sale businesses have been put for sale but the spirit of God says right now in this season there is an all time war that we are raising by the spirit of God against the powers that are buying and selling concerning the will of God God help me who did I come to preach to tonight the powers of darkness that's trying to buy the will of God for your life the powers of darkness that's trying to put your future on sale in the name of Jesus the anointing of the Holy Ghost is coming against them tonight my God where is the Holy Ghost in this room where is the power of God in this room God sent me tonight to fight for somebody I came with the anointing of a warrior I know that we are in 21 days and the power of the kingdom is in the room. I came with the force of heaven. I came with the sword of the spirit. My assignment is to stand in the gap and to fight for your family. I came to fight for your children. I came to fight for your destiny. I came to fight for your purpose. I came to fight for the days of your life. I came to tell every devil that's trying to buy and sell. The devil is a liar. Enough is enough. You can buy nothing from this place. These lives are not on sale. My life is not available for sale. My anointing is not for sale. My glory is not for sale. My gift is not for sale. My ministry is not for sale. I 
I must do the will of God. I must manifest my own anointing. My virtue is not for sale. You tell every devil trying to steal from me. You can't steal what God has blessed me. I shall fulfill my own destiny. Oh my rabbi, da, 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 da. Looks like God sent me to 15 people here. Where are the people God sent me to? Is there somebody here tonight that want to stand with me in the power of the Holy Ghost and agree with me tonight as we go to the strouds of the strong man and we take back everything that belongs to us. We are taking pay. Help me Jesus. We are taking back everything that belongs to us. We are standing in the gap and we are taking back everything that God blessed us with. This is the year of your life. Nothing shall be taken back from you. The devil is a liar. Tell somebody I'm not on sale. I'm not for sale. You can't take from me. You can't steal from me. You can't buy from me. You can't exchange my glory. You can't exchange my anointing. You can't exchange my gift. You can't exchange my calling. I'm not for sale. I must fulfill my destiny. Jesus went in the temple. He saw those who are buying and selling. He says, you are not welcome here. This place shall be the house of prayer. This is the house of the spirit. This is the house of destiny. This is the house of prophecy. This is the house of God. This is the place of prosperity. This is the place of the anointed. This is the place of the move of God. We shall not compromise. We are not selling our purpose to the devil. Devil, you got nothing to give me in exchange for my power. You got nothing to give me in exchange for my destiny I must run my race I must finish my course I must fulfill my destiny somebody say I'm not for sale Holy Ghost is oh my dad bosha he la 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 Please. Oh my God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus in the Namazoro Bazekede. Holy Ghost, thank you tonight. Please sit down. Please sit down. It is interesting for you to begin to understand how God has given you everything that you need. Everything that you require to succeed. Everything that you require to fulfill destiny has already been given to you. A lot of people don't understand this. The enemy keep lying to them that there is something that they don't need or that they need that they don't have. God has given you everything you need. You are beautiful for your situation. You are specially crafted for your own assignment. You don't need to envy other people because you have been made for your own journey. You have been prepared for your own race. And everything that you need to be who God called you to be has already been engineered into your spirit. Most people miss out on what God has given to them because they do not acknowledge or recognize that God package your gift and your destiny in forms of a seed. Oh God help me right now. It's in you but it's a seed. He puts it in your belly as a seed. Oh God help me I feel the Holy Ghost. You see where a lot of people miss out is they are looking for other people. They are looking at other people who have already grown their own seed and their seed has already matured and is bearing fruit and they begin to wonder wow how I wish I had a life like that sister or how I wish my life was like that person's life. But the reality is God gave that person a seed in 
their spirit and they grew their seed and their seed became manifested and that's why they have the fruit that they have in their lives and if you keep ignoring your own seed what you keep carrying about for many years is your own seed you're never gonna have a fruit it's high time you started you know uh, taking your eyes away from other people's fruit and you start to grow your own seed if you start to walk your own seed right now in a couple of months in a couple of years your own seed will also develop and it will manifest a fruit that is going to show and the whole world will see your good works and glorify your father that's in heaven everybody has a deposit of seed inside of them your seed might be different from my seed but you have a seed in your spirit and most people I want you to hear this while they are busy overlooking their own seed envying other people's fruits wishing that they had somebody else's blessing the devil saw their seed in them oh God help me you know one of the spirit of the herald is to see greatness in infancy and to cut it off am I talking to somebody right now you see, when I was younger, God always said to me, you have everything you need. Even when it seemed like I needed more money for the assignment, he said, no, everything is in you. You keep working your seed and you're going to see that there's going to be fruit that will come out of your seed. And every time God would take me from one level of my ministry to another capacity, what God would do is, he would let me to sow the seed that he was putting in my spirit. And that seed will give me harvest. And when I get to the place of harvest, I will take seed again and plant it. And it will take me to another level of harvest. And that's how you grow in the spirit. And so many people ignore their seed. But the devil is hunting for seed. Satan is not only looking for finished product. Because the devil knows that once you manifest, it's harder for him to target you. So what he wants to do is to terminate your life before for your seed can come to maturation but God told me here to tell somebody here you don't bother about what you don't have you focus on what you have right now in your belly there's a seed if you can cultivate your seed your seed is going to produce a harvest that the world is about to celebrate the devil is a liar you don't think you worth much but you what greatness uh, there is greatness in the form of a seed oh my god yeah 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 there is greatness tell three people there is greatness uh, in form of a seed uh, inside of you uh, there's a seed of greatness uh, there's a seed of business uh, there's a seed of a ministry there's a seed of a book uh, there's a seed uh, my god of destiny uh, there's a seed of a multi-million dollar conglomerate uh, that's inside of your spirit uh, stop envying other people uh, walk your seed uh, walk at your own salvation with fear and trembling god has given to every man uh, a measure of grace uh, a measure of seed every man is carrying something focus on your seed focus come and tell somebody see i'm gonna work my seed and that's why many people they don't understand that when you get in the word of god you are cultivating your seed when you spend time with god you are cultivating your seed when you stay in the place of prayer you are called my god the devil is a liar when people lie against you you are cultivating your seed when you are lonely, when you are broke, when you are broken, God will use every circumstance in your life to cultivate your seed because there is something inside of you. You don't see it, but the devil sees it. And the devil is after your seed. When Jesus was born, nobody knew him, nobody recognized him, but the devil saw that a seed has been planted. I can let it grow. I come tonight with the spirit of Elijah and I declare upon your life every devil trying to cut off your seed before your greatness manifest I raise up a standard against them tonight I declare and decree that God
God now gives you wisdom and God gives you anointing and God gives you capacity so that you can see the anointing on your life and you tell everybody you watch out for me my seed is growing watch out for me hello everybody you think i'm nobody but god is growing something here woman of god god is growing something here god is growing destiny inside of me i don't know about you but there's a hundred people in the building tonight they carry the seed of greatness that's going to feed millions of children you carry the seed of a multi-million dollar destiny a massive ministry is in your belly right now don't abort your seed cultivate your seed sit down please in the marketplace of darkness look at my eyes everybody the devil is not busy selling money okay let me help you the biggest transaction in the world is not the exchange of money is exchange of promissory note. When you go to the real estate, you go to the stock market, they never take money to the stock market, but they are trading billions of dollars. They are trading in, in virtual market. You could log online and you can move money around from nations to nations without seeing money. Real wealthy people, they don't carry cash. It's poor people that carry cash. Come on somebody. Once you're understanding of prosperity begins to change what happens is you are repositioning yourself from experiencing baby level destiny to a high level destiny it, real business deals it happens through promissory note when you want to do a multi-million hundreds of million dollar of 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 real estate investment or some real stock market or stuff like that your bank only writes a letter your bank will write a letter to another bank and say, we guarantee that this person is able to execute this project. Am I talking to somebody right now? Oh, the devil is a liar. Uh, you're not going to be thinking smart. Somebody like, oh, Lord, bless me, $50,000. I'm going to put it in my pocket. <laughs> you, you could go to a store and finish $50,000 before you come out. That's no real blessing. Real prosperity is through promissory note. When you are buying big things, you don't carry cash. Your bank sends a promissory note. This is not low level. What I'm preaching tonight is not for babies. Okay. What I'm preaching tonight is for, is for high flyers. How many high flyers are here tonight? Okay. What I'm preaching tonight is for destiny destiny shakers, history makers. What I'm preaching tonight is for people who are going to wine and dine with kings. What I'm preaching tonight is for line crossers. What I'm preaching tonight is for men and women that are going to lay their footprint upon the sand of time. What I'm preaching tonight is for people that's going to be new real estate development in the suburb of Toronto and your name is going to be on it. And people are going to say, who is responsible for that new development is going to be you. I'm not here to ask God for a 2015 car. This night is not for people who are black. They are asking God for an extra house or for them to buy a condominium. I came to shake off greatness. Shanda Barokataha. I came to call you by the name of your destiny. I'm talking to somebody. Some of us can't settle for the average. The, the call of destiny is upon our lives. We believe God is calling us for greater. Let me say something to you. When it comes to real business, when it comes to elitist business, it's not done with cash. It's done with strategy. It's done with wisdom. He's done with reputation. Reputation is big deal in the marketplace. My God, am I talking to somebody? There are some people when they give you their business card and they write.
write something at the back of their business card. It can open a 10 million dollar business for you. I'm talking to somebody right now that God is shifting your position from thinking like a hustler. You no more think like a consumer. You no more engage life like somebody that needs to stay on minimum wage. But tonight if your eyes can open, if your ears can open, if your spirit man can open, heaven is about to shift the rhythm. God is changing the rule of engagement. God is calling kingdom citizens. The Bible says, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is the will of your father to give unto you the kingdom. Is there somebody in the building tonight that wants to tap into the kingdom? I want you to sit down. Hey, oh, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. In the marketplace of darkness, where the devil is buying, they don't trade in dollars. Oh, God, help me tonight. The devil does not trade in dollars. He does not trade in pound sterling. He does not trade in silver. The devil does not trade in houses. The devil does not trade in gold. The devil knows those things. They are physical. They are empirical. And their values are limited. I'm going to tell you things that the devil is trying to buy from you now. I feel God here tonight. You don't want to miss any day of these 21 days. Because what some of you don't realize is that what God is restoring, you can't see it. Some people, they are waiting for money to hit their account so that they know their prayer has been answered. Oh, when I see $10,000 hit my account, then I know my prayer is answered. God does not... In the transaction of heaven, it's not done in dollars and pounds. It's done in the value system of heaven. Oh, come on, somebody help me tonight. Some of you don't understand the value system of the spirit. That's why you miss your blessing. Because you think your blessing is going to come when $25,000 hit your account. What you don't realize that the $25,000 is only a manifestation of a bigger blessing that's been deposited in your spirit. And if the eyes of your understanding is not enlightened, you would think that God was not blessing you. When in fact God already, he just shifted something major in your spirit. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Do you know that motivation is bigger than money? Do you know that confidence is bigger than money? Do you know that revelation is bigger than money? Do you know, hallelujah, that self-awareness is bigger than money? God is blessing somebody in this 21 days. God is shifting somebody. God is repositioning you. God is giving you everything that the devil stole from from you that you did not even know was stolen. Who am I preaching to tonight? The eyes of your understanding is being enlightened. It's high time the church started to understand the real value of the kingdom. How does the value of heaven works? How does the realm of the spirit works? Because if you are waiting for dollar, you are waiting for pound Stalin, you will miss the blessing. Sit down for a few minutes. How does the devil transact? How do they do transactions in the spirit realm? Look at my eyes. The number one commodity in the, in the spirit realm is time. The number one commodity. The, the number one commodity in the spirit realm is time. Hey, The Bible says in the book of Revelations, For the devil has come to the earth with a great wrath. For he knows that his time is short. The Bible says, write down the vision and make it plain. For it is yet for an appointed time. Though it tarry, it shall not delay. It shall speak. The Bible says, for the Lord shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. Psalm 107 verse 30. For the time to favor her is come. Yea, the said time. Look at my eyes, somebody. You don't understand that in the realm of the spirit, the devil is trying to steal the time of your life. Okay. The devil, you are busy looking for car. The devil is trying to waste your time. 
Oh, help me, Jesus. You are looking, you are busy looking for a job, but the devil is trying to waste your time. He only wants to steal extra five years out of your life. He wants to steal another three years out of your life. He wants to steal another seven years out of your life. And too many believers, they are wasting their time, and the devil is giving them nothing back. Who am I talking to? The the devil will do everything in your life to steal your time. He will give you a dead end relationship and he will say you stay there and keep wasting your time. He will give you a dead end job. You wake up to it every day. You know it's not going anywhere. That you will think your life depends on it and the devil says this is the will of God for your life but I'm going to steal 15 years out of your life doing nothing. He will give you a dead end business he will give you bitterness he will give you offense he will give you unforgiveness he will give you pain he will give you brokenness you keep crying over something that happened to you 10 years ago all he's trying to do is to make sure that you stand still and everything is moving around you and time is going on but the devil is a liar I come to know with the revelation of the spirit I come I go to the marketplace of darkness come on somebody there's an anointing that's coming in this building somebody is here tonight by the spirit of God you gotta tell yourself I'm buying back my time I'm buying back the season of my life. I'm buying back my seasons. I'm buying back my time. I'm buying back my years. Some of you have wasted five years doing nothing. Crying over spilled milk. Waiting that something could have changed. Saying could have, should have, would have. Some of you keep loitering about. Pleasing other people. Satisfying the opinion of men. Paralyzing your destiny. You have kept your Seven under the devil is a liar. I take back every year that I lost. The Bible says in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 25, and I will restore the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillars. I will bring it back. The devil is a thief of time, he is, is in the marketplace of darkness. What they buy is time. Too many young people are wasting their time they are stuck on drugs they are stuck on alcohol they are stuck on depression they are stuck on self loathe self abuse self hatred they are, they are in pain they are in agony and before you know it 15 years of your life is gone somebody is here tonight I raise up a standard I command let there be a restoration of the years that the Canker woman have stolen the years the locusts have stolen the years the caterpillars have stolen I command your years to come back to you there is a time for every purpose on the heaven there is a time to be born there is a time to die there is a time to plant there is a time to harvest it is not right to be doing the right thing at the wrong time God is saying I'm a about to bring back the years that you lost the Bible says and God shall bless us and that early time matters to God God is trading in time everything about God everything about the kingdom now is about time God is not just doing things God is accelerating things why is God accelerating things because time is running out Jesus is coming back soon and God is calling the church to rise up in this season in the power of the kingdom and do everything they want to do do it now you want to buy a house buy it now you want to get married get married now you want to preach preach now you want to start a ministry start now
now. There is no time to waste. Jesus is coming, sir. I've wasted too many years. That's why I'm going double. That's why I'm walking around the clock. I gotta get back. The years that I lost. Many of you tonight, you've lost 20 years. You can't afford to sleep eight hours. You've wasted too many years. Get up early and do what you gotta do. I come in the spirit of God. I come in the anointing of joy. I'm fighting for you now. Those years that you lost, I'm saying to the strong man, give back the years. Somebody is here now. If your understanding can open, you will know tonight, God is not wasting time anymore. God is calling you higher. Take back what you lost. Take back your life. Take back the last five years. Take back the last ten years. Take back the years that you were busy doing nothing. Take hey. Sit down, please. The devil still time. Jesus went to the temple. He saw them that were buying and selling. He chased them out. The number two thing the devil is trying to steal is the anointing. The word for the anointing, the original word is charis. Or charisma. And it means gift. The gift of the spirit. The virtue that God has given to every individual. The devil wants to steal it. He wants to trade your gift for nothing. That's what they are marketing in the marketplace of darkness. Now let, 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 let me show you something from the word of God. The Bible says the gift and calling of God, they are without repentance. In other words, they are irrevocable. And, that, and that's the beautiful news. That once God gave you a gift, once God placed his hand on you and put a deposit of something in your life, it's never going to leave you. That's beautiful to know. However, the strong man, I want you to hear me, everybody in the building. What he does, man of God, he deactivates your gift. Satan seeks to disengage people's gift. And to make the gift incapacitated. Okay. For your gift to function as it ought to function, it must be in the right cutting edge position. You can have a knife and the knife can cut a thing. If you had a blunt knife, what is the use of a blunt knife? That's why Paul told Timothy, stare up the gift that is in you. I want you to hear this tonight. Stay up the gift, the anointing that's in you, which you have received by the laying on of my hands. So in other words, it's possible for you to be gifted, but your gift is docile, is ineffective. Your gift is powerless. Your gift is redundant. It's not blessing anybody. You need to be on the cutting edge. You need to align your gift in harmony with the rhythm of heaven. So that it can be deployed and discharged with power. What the enemy does every now and then, is to keep you in a position of powerlessness and misery 
so that you don't even remember that you are even gifted. You have too much drama going on in your life. You can't even remember your own gift. I was talking to a very powerful, famous preacher one time. And this particular preacher was saying to me that when the enemy was dealing with this preacher, it got to a time she didn't even recognize herself. She said, I didn't even know who I was. She said to me, they had to bring videos of my own preachings to me. And when I'm watching myself preach, I'm saying, who is that woman? Who is that woman? And they're saying, that's you. The gift is there, but it's ineffective. Satan will put you in a tight corner if you let him. Until you don't even like your gift anymore. Have you met believers who said, I'm not even going to prophesy anymore? Because everybody hates me once I prophesy. Some people have drama in their lives. Drama, personal issues. They are running away from their own gift. They can't move in their calling. That's what the devil does. You don't understand that the devil is a strategic devil. It's very strategic in his attacks. He knows if he lets you alone and if he allows your gift to flourish, you are going to do damage to his kingdom. So he's going to make somebody like you. I mean, hate on you. And the moment you focus away from your gift and your calling, and you are now concerned about people's attitude and opinion about you, you can't even function in your gift. Oh, come on, somebody. And that's what the devil wanted in the first place. To stop you from preaching. To stop you from singing. To stop you from serving. To stop you from writing. To stop you from being an encourager. To stop you from being a giver. You know, God can give you the ministry of giving. The gift to give. And God can be blessing you to do it. It's not your money you are spending. It's God's money. You are only a channel. You are not the source. And do you know it's possible for you to see that maybe your, your seed was abused. And the devil takes away your eyes from giving to God into being part of a system and it can destabilize your gift. Am I talking to somebody tonight? When others are focused on the battle, I focus on the prize. I know that this battle is about my gift. It's about my calling. It's about my assignment. The devil wants to put me in a tight corner so it can shut down my voice. And I cannot be able to preach the gospel anymore. Many people, Handa Bosata, are still preaching the way they were preaching before, but their gift has been corrupted. Your, their gift has been polluted. A scandal has hit their ministry. And the same gift has no potency like it used to have before. I came to prophesy to somebody who has lost their gift because something happened to you. God is restoring the potency of your gift. I want you to hear this. The Bible says, Samson, he told Delilah, is that her name? He told Delilah the secret of his covenant with God. The secret of his anointing. And when he told Delilah, Delilah shaved off his head. Look at my eyes, everybody. And when Delilah shaved off his head, Scripture says, hmm, Deli Delilah shouted, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. The word of God says, hear me. He wanted to do as before. He stared up himself, but he was like another man. Because the Lord had departed from him. The gift had become deactivated. I want you to stand to your feet right now. Lift up your two hands. Say, I command. Every power. 
every circumstance, every conspiracy of the enemy that's targeted against my gift, against my anointing, against my voice, against my potency. Right now, I shut you down. Look at my somebody. The devil can put a personal battle in your life in order to mess up your gift. Many people, they, they just keep fighting in their marriage. They can't preach anymore. A lot of pastors have quit the ministry because their wife is a big contention in their lives. And when the battle becomes so strong, what do they do? They quit ministry. They said, I'll just keep this woman happy. So, so, so you'll be preaching to dogs and, and cats, your pets at home, because you want to keep that. Every time there's a battle on your life, is the battle for your gift. It's the battle for your glory. Because your gift, look at my eyes, everybody, is what makes room for you. The Bible says the gift of a man maketh room for him and bring him before great men. Look at my eyes, everybody. Your gift is God's investment for your greatness. Your gift is what will open doors for you before great men. It's not nothing, but your, it's your gift. Every man has their gift. If you ignore your gift, you die where you are. Your gift is what gives you access to your next level. If you don't pay attention to your gift, and you say to yourself, I will not shut my gift down anymore. I will not minimize my gift. I will not allow my gift to die. I will manifest my gift. I will go to a place where my gift is celebrated and not tolerated. I will let my gift speak. If you have a gift, you have a future. If you use your gift, you use, you have a future. If you shut down your gift, you have no future. Oh God, the devil is a liar. Place your hand on your belly and say every gift of God. Shout it. Say every gift of God in my spirit. Activate. Now, my gift come alive. My gift manifests my anointing. Manifests my calling, my assignment, my glory. I command in the name of Jesus, manifest the power of the enemy trying to mock it, trying to negotiate my gift. I destroy you. My gift is not for sale. My anointing is not for sale. Let me hear you shout yes. Sit down. I could keep going on, but I'm going to tell you one more. Do you see why you have to be sure that your decisions are not selling things that are valuable in your life? You got to be sure that every time you make a decision, you are not selling away another seven years in your life. Some things are not worth it. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Some people are not worth five minutes of your life. Oh, okay. <laughs> Am I talking to someone right now? Man of God, you know, hanging with some people can, can take seven years of your life. Man of God, you know, you're going to be with some people... They will give you injury. It takes you 10 years to, to come out of that injury. Some people have a propensity to damage everybody they meet. They damage you emotionally. They damage you financially. You're going to meet some people. You have great credit. In three weeks, your credit will go to the depth of hell. Oh, my Lord, help me tonight. It's going to take you another 10 years to recover your, your, your credit. You got, some of you have met people. You are still recovering. Listen to me. I have no time to waste. Some of you, you're going to hang with somebody. One night stand, they take 10 years from your life. You just get you just, one night stand. You just get it. You know, you're going to college. Oh, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to have you this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And then the next thing is, you are pregnant. 
and the next thing, the baby is smoke, the baby is crying. No, no more college. Next thing you know, it, you are stuck with the baby. You just, baby, 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 baby. And somebody say, how about college? Say, I don't even know anymore. The years I've wasted. Lift your hand. Tonight there's recovery. Everyone that have damaged your life and stolen years from your life, you are taking your life back. You are taking your life back. You are taking your life back. You are taking your glory back. In the name of Jesus. Sit down for a few minutes. The third thing the devil steals is the blessing on your life. <clears throat> I want you to listen to me. The Bible clearly tells us about the blessing, you lodges, in Greek, you lodges, the blessing of God. <clears throat> the blessing of God is the spiritual empowerment to prosper. Is the spiritual empowerment, look at my eyes, everybody. The blessing is the empowerment in your spirit to prosper. The Bible says, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. God empowers you to succeed. The blessing of God, it is he that maketh rich and add no sorrow. <clears throat> In Genesis, the Bible says, and God blessed them. And he said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and replenish it. There is a measure of blessing that comes upon a man's life. And when the blessing comes on your life, the blessing makes Difficult things to be easy. Let me say something to you. God places a blessing upon you for every level of your life. As long as you are saved and sanctified and born again, there is a blessing that's placed upon you. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. <clears throat> How is it that you have found it so quickly? Because the Lord your God brought it to me. The blessing of God distinguishes you and sets you apart from the crowd. The blessing of God is what is keeping this ministry thriving. It's, it's a blessing factor. It's a spiritual force. <clears throat> the hand of God. The favor of God. When Joseph got to the house of Potiphar, the Bible says, look in my eyes, God blessed the household of Potiphar because of, of Joseph. Joseph, even Potiphar himself said, I noticed that under your stewardship and governance, everything that I have has multiplied. It's the blessing. He carried the blessing. When he got in the prison, man of God, even the prison was at peace to the point that the prison keeper had to make Joseph the governor. The Bible says when J Jacob got into the house of labor, because J Jacob was carrying the blessing, everything that Laban had prospered. Some of you, you know why you need to start your own business. Because the blessing on your life is working for your employer. And God wants that blessing to work for your own money. Okay, that's for another day. But you got to understand why you must be conscious of your own blessing. You must be conscious that your work, your hard work, is not what brings you wealth. The Bible says, for they did not inherit the land. By their own sword, but by your mighty hand, by your outstretched arm. God is the one that distinguishes you and separates you and favors you and causes the light of his glory to shine on you. When you meet a man who is operating under the blessing, everything he touches produces increase. A thousandfold increase. You can't see the blessing, but it manifests in your life when things that are hard for other people becomes easy for you. And you know something, people of God? The enemy can see that blessing. He can see it. And you know what the devil wants to do? 
He wants to exchange your blessing. Many people today are giving away their blessing to the enemy at little price or no price. It's a bad bargain. It's a bad bargain. Every time that you step out of the place where the Holy Ghost is, every time that you exchange the presence of God for the deceitfulness of sin, the devil will rob you of a blessing. We are given blessing away. We are giving away the favor on our lives. We are selling it short at no cost. We are selling it short. I want you to hear me today. You are called to succeed. You are called to prosper. There is a measure of grace that's over your life. You have to protect your anointing. Protect your blessing. Protect the presence of God. Protect the presence of God. Look at my eyes, everybody. Whenever the blessing is on your life, whatever you do, it prospers. But once you let yourself to become confused about what is bringing the blessing, and you begin to imagine that it is your own strength and power, rather than the grace of God, you are selling away the blessing. I want you to hear me today. Every blessing that you have sold away is coming back. I want you to hear this. I'm going to close it real quick. The Bible says, Esau was hungry. And Esau went to his brother. And scripture says he sold his birthright. There are some things you don't sell. There was an exchange there. He said, I'm selling you my birthright. You be the elder and I'll be the younger. It's nothing. So what are you giving me? He said, swear by God. He said, I swear by God. Okay, so he sold his birthright. I want you to hear this. After he sold his birthright, the inheritance moved onto the head of Jacob. I don't know if their mother knew about the transaction, but a couple of years later, the father wanted to die. And the father called the elder son, in his eyes. He didn't know the blessing had shifted. I want you to hear me, somebody. Woo, Holy Ghost, help me tonight. The blessing is a spiritual force. And the moment you lose the blessing, everything in your life will go upside down. The moment Esau lost the blessing, everything went upside down. Everything. The man who was the head, he became the tail. His, his own mother sabotaged him. Even though his mother, maybe she knew or she did not know about the transaction. But she, things worked against him. And while well, he was meant to go get the venison, the mother, amen, prepared Jacob and said, you go to the father and, and claim the blessing. I want you to hear this. When Jacob got to his, uh, 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 Isaac, their father, Isaac said, this is the smell of Esau, my son. But this is the voice of Jacob. But anyway, I'm going to bless you. And he began to pronounce a blessing on him. And he blessed him in his own name and in the name of his father Abraham. He blessed him by the dew of heaven. He blessed him by every blessing imaginable. I want you to hear me. And after he left, Esau, he came back from hunting. He prepared the venison. My father, I brought you also the venison. He said, well, now who are you? I'm Esau, your son. Who was it that just came? Hear me? That I blessed. He said, it was not me. He said, it is my brother Jacob. This second time, he has stolen my blessing again. No, no, no. He didn't steal it this second time. The second time was only a confirmation of the first time. You lost your blessing once and for all. I want you to hear this. The Bible said he came to his father. He said, my father, this is the venison. Eat and bless me. Oh, God, help me. The father said, this is not about hunger. If I was hungry, I'm a wealthy man. Isaac inherited all the blessing of Abraham. He was not hungry. It was about the law of the spirit. That blessing is provoked through blessing, through gift, through sacrifice. He said, now, my father, bless me too. 
the father said, there is no more blessing for you. He said, he cried. He said, my father, is there not a blessing in your mouth for me too? And the father said, your brother has taken it all. Hear me tonight. That blessing was not just talking. Anybody can wish you well. But wishful thinking or wishful pronouncement is not the same thing as blessing. The blessing is a download and a deposit of a supernatural empowerment. And the father knows that he has given it all away. Jesus said, who touched me? He said, for virtue left me. And that's a mistake many people make. They trivialize deep things. The things of the spirit and the things of God. They don't understand that there is a realm you get to in God. That you tap into dangerous blessing. And by the reason of that blessing, it is not possible for your life not to succeed. And that's what the devil is targeting. The devil is busy hunting for blessing. And many believers are giving their blessing away like Esau for nothing. The devil is a liar. Look at me. That's why I don't just go everywhere. That's why I don't hang around with anybody. Because I recognize the blessing on my life. I can't mess with my blessing. You think it's preaching that makes you great. It's the blessing. You can preach anything you want to preach. If God does not bless it, it will not go anywhere. You can sell anything you want to sell. If God does not bless it, it will not. But if God blesses it, you can sell this little thing and you make prosperity. I come to speak to somebody. Everybody that's here tonight, if you have lost your blessing, if you have lost your virtue, if you have lost your glory, recapture it back tonight. That's what the devil is looking for. Look at my eyes, everybody. Sit down for a minute. That's what the devil is looking for. The devil, he doesn't care about how much you work. He's looking to steal the blessing. The wise men, they saw the star of Jesus. You think these are wise men who are scholars. They have education. Wise. That's not who they are. These were magicians, astrologers, God, star chasers. These are people that gaze at the stars. They, they study greatness. They look at a little child. They say, there's a greatness on this child. Let's manipulate it. Let's hijack it. Every power that's trying to hijack your glory in the dream. Every power trying to confuse you. Every power trying to steal the essence of your being. The real inner man. The power that produces wealth. I command them to be broken in pieces. Look at my somebody. You need to constantly plug yourself into the spirit. Look at my somebody. Connect yourself to the floor. You can't just go anywhere. You can't just, just sit anywhere. You can't just do anything. You can't live your life carelessly. You can't just be doing life as, no. You got to be conscious of the blessing on your life. You got to guard your blessing. Guard your blessing. Guard the favor of God that's on your life. Keep your relationship with God. Keep it in, intact. Keep your covenant with God. As long as the blessing is on your life, everything that seems not to be working will work. All you need is the blessing. Somebody's here tonight, God is giving you back everything you lost. I want you to stand to your feet and lift up your hands. Say, Father, Father. you're going to pray like a warrior tonight. Say, Father, Father. you're going to tap in the God realm and take back those three things. Say, Father, Father. say it again. Say, Father, Father. In, the in the name of Jesus, I recover, I recover. My, time, my time, my anointing, my anointing. and my blessing. my blessing. 